Hello, welcome to Scratch 3 Printing. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Creality Print version 7. Let's scratch to this topic. December has been a very busy month for me, so I have not uploaded that much video. But hopefully from today onward and the, into the new year, I can upload more video consistently. Thank you so much for sticking with me and let's get to the video. Creality just released their version 7 of Creality Print. It was on beta testing for quite a while and I have not got a chance to, you know, take a look at the beta version, which is the version 7.3, but to be precise, it's 7.0.0.3 and then a bunch of random numbers. The version I have today is 7.0.0.4 and then a bunch of numbers. I have seen many people posting that the version 7.3 is not really good. It has some bugs or the printing quality isn't as good as the previous version 6.3. But hopefully today, the newest version 7.4 is gonna fix all of those problems and have the quality be similar or better than the version 6 of Creality Print. I have already downloaded the version 7.4 and I printed a couple of things. Well, to be exact, this bin was printed on the K2 Plus with the version 7.4. And if we look at the quality here, um, I think it is pretty on par with the previous version. So this bin here is printed on the K2 Plus as well. And this is the version 6.3 or just the version 6. And if we look here, we can see that some places like this, this isn't like the best at all. Comparing both these bin, the quality seems to be on par with each other. Even the top layer seems to be pretty on par with each other. It's pretty similar. These are both PTG from Creality. So it's just going to be the software at this point here. But it looks like the quality is still similar to the quality of the version 6. I'm going to talk a little bit more then we're going to jump into what is new on the version 7 and then we will compare both the slicers. So what I look for into a slicer is I don't print many figures and try to get the best quality. I mainly just use a 0.2 millimeter layer height and I just try to print the things as fast as possible. So I guess quality and type is in there as well. But I'm not looking for like you know super super perfect mini figures. Stuff. I don't really do mini figures. I just print bins, box, functional parts and stuff like that. What I look for is kind of intolerance and stuff like that and functionality of the slicer. If a slicer is like really good but it's not functional, you cannot print, you cannot do anything with that, it's really not worth it in my opinion. So the first thing that I look into a slicer is functionality. So is it like functional? Um, would it crash? Would it load like big stuff? How fast does it load? Is the print quality good on par with the previous version or slightly better? If it's on par or slightly better, I'm okay with it. I don't really need like a really big jump gap in like print quality and stuff like that. But printing better is just better, right? You don't want worse for the new version. You want better for all the versions. Is it easy to use? So for me, a summarize of a slicer is you put stuff in there, you edit however you want, paint, color, support, you click print and enter print. There's no error, there's nothing like that. That's like a good slicer for me. And of course, the print quality is also good. But enough of that, let's jump over to Creality Print and let's see what new things we have. All right, we are now in Creality Cloud and this is Creality Print version 7.0.0.4127. So this was released on December 29. Let's read the description. Number one, comprehensive print algorithm upgrades significantly improve service quality and vibrant artifacts. In my Discord, people have tested and they say that the surface quality is not improved. It's like a down proof <laughs> so and hopefully this version fix that point three version um it's really bad the service quality is not improved at all number two introduce ai intelligent analysis to automatically check if the intelligent recognized model needs support this i feel like um it has been doing this for a while now but i don't know why they put it here because every single time you put a 3d model that needs support right at the bottom right here it says that hey it's your model is floating or something like that. Number three, added multiple engineering grade smart infield pattern, balance strength, speed, and stability. So we're going to check that to see if they add that or they just put that there. Number four, major prime tower, wipe tower, enhancement, improve multi-material print readability. Okay, so this is multi-material. Maybe Creati is creating a 3D printer that has a couple of tool head and we can do multi-color tool. Maybe. Hopefully, that would be amazing. Five upgraded device manager when printing, including remote camera preview support. Yeah, that's not really working for me. I cannot print. Um, I'll show you guys here in a bit. 
Number six, K2 Plus specific optimization great improved print time, material usage, estimation accuracy. Nice. So we will test this as well. Uh, seven deeply integrated creative cloud ecosystem with online models, tutorials, stuff like that. Introduce LOD rendering for G code preview to smoother inter interaction with complex model. Enhance third party 3MF import. Nice. Some slicer does not allow third party 3MF file at all. So it's really annoying if you try to use one slicer with everything. But if you want to do that, use Oracle Slicer. 10 fixed bugs and stuff like that. Let's just go to Creative Print version 7 and see what is the difference. Hey, look at this. This is the version 6 and they integrated this into the slicer, which is brand new. I never seen this before. So you know what? Let's just take a look at this and see what they have added. So the AI smart analysis is, um, if you can see here, it's right there. AI support, layer optimized, quality, wall surface, smoothing wall speed along Z experimental, reduce Z bending, stuff like that. If we look at this, you can see that the color is more consistent throughout the whole thing. The previous version looks like this. It's that green, yellow, green, yellow. So it has a bad, you know, surface quality. Hey, we can do a consistent surface. Ooh, look at that. It has three now consistent or like don't slow down on surface at all. And you can do that or you can do this consistent versus not consistent. And this is like a huge problem with prints that is very tall like this. This one is the before. As you can see here, this the printing speed affects the color. So right here, it could probably print slower and right here it prints faster. So the surface is different. This has been a problem for like years now. And right here, it's all consistent. So it looks exactly like the same model and right here is vfa this one has significantly reduced it but i don't know maybe or maybe not we will have to test this later on in the future they finally catch up to the game of orca slicer so i'm not gonna bore you guys with all of this i will leave this in the description down below so you guys can go and check it out for yourself and read through all of this i'm just gonna go to create print version 7 right now and just compare both the version 6 and the version 7. Wow, this has so much information on uh, waste flushing. So this, look at this. This is the old one and this is the new one. So originally, right, it will just cut and it will extrude all of this out. But for the new one, it's going to retract and then just cut this little teeny tiny bit here. But I'm still not quite sure if this is like reasonable because i feel like this part right here may clog if this happens consistently and if the finman has stringy right here it may clog something along that line but hopefully that does not happen and also by doing this you will have to purge less and get your new color faster which is nice this is the version 7 as you can see up here it has the online mode so you can go here and download files from creality cloud and then just Print right in the slicer, which is convenient, which is kind of good. And if we look at the tools up here, you can see that it has this AI cloud server. So I'm just going to click this and it's going to generate support for our model. So then it's going to change this. And if we want to do that, we can click apply. And I'm going to click slice plate to see what kind of support it's going to generate. Nothing because this thing does not need support. Forget that. So from what I noticed is different. If we look at the key over here, it is a little bit spaced out and, you know, a little bit bigger so you can see. If we go to the version six, we click preview again. Keep in mind, everything is the same. You can see that this is a little bit more smaller. The version 7 is a little bit bigger. You can see more clearer. So the version 7 for this is going to take 3 hours, 58 minutes. For the version 6.3, it's going to take 3 hours, 56 minutes, which is 2 minutes faster. Everything is the same. The setting, everything is the same. Filming cost about 128 grams. So it's really, really close. It's just 0 0.04 off. So it's really close. It's just teeny, tiny, minor stuff like that. So what I'm saying right now is if I click send print here, you can see that it say that it's going to use the spool holder. It does not detect my CFS. And I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Because if we look at the top right here, we can see my filling right here, the auto mapping. I click this, it's going to sync with my CFS. But when I send print, it does not detect my CFS here. I don't know why my CFS is not showing here. I only use this bool. So what I have to do is click send print and then go to my 3D printer and then select the file and then select the color, then print, which I don't like it at all. 
if I go to device, right, uh, my K2 Plus is right here. You can see that it's on. The 3 printer is on right here. But I don't know why my CFS is not loading in. If anybody know what is happening, definitely let me know. Is this problem happening to you also or not? The version 6 does not have this online model on top. This is smaller. And let's take a look at the infill. So it has all of this. It has so much more. From the TPMS FK down, it has so much more. The version 6 only has a couple. I've been printed with the version 7 and it has been good. Um, printed this whole thing, have a really good quality similar to the version 6. So it's good for me. But let me know your opinion Same. in the comments down below. So from what I can see on the version 7, and if we look at these two print quality, um, I can still see that they are very, very similar in terms of print quality. But hey, the version 7 works and it printed this whole thing in one go. So I like it. The version 7 is good. So if you have not yet, go ahead and download the version 7 for yourself. Go ahead and test it. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about the version 7 of Creality Print? Is it good, bad, or like should they just revert back to 6 and then add more things? Later in the future, do 7 when they have like huge significant improvements. Like I said earlier, many people reported that version 7 has problems, server layer, top layer, side, the layer wall and stuff like that. It's like really bad compared to the previous version. But hopefully the version 7.4 of Creative Print fixes all those bugs, things, and makes everything good. One major problem for me is you saw that I can't, I don't know why I cannot send print from Creative Print to my K2 Plus at all. A couple of weeks ago it started happening and now I just cannot, I don't know, send print from Creative Print to my K2 Plus. I don't know why. The CFS is synced with Creative Print in my 3D printer, right? But I just cannot send print to the 3D printer. It keeps saying that it does not detect my CFS and it will just use a size spool, which is very annoying. I gotta click send print to my 3D printer and then go to the touch screen, find the file, and then print using the CFS, which is not good in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below, how do you fix that problem? I try everything, restarting, reconnecting, everything like that, and it's just not working. So let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like this is coming. Oh yeah, and this bed is a project for the Q2, GD Q2. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that video. If you haven't yet become a member of the YouTube channel, it helps me tremendously. And as always, keep on 3D printing.